Hello and welcome back to Conversations with Claire. Today, my guest, you're gonna have to wait for your intro, is Dakota Meyer. He is a patriot. I'm sure you've heard this approximately a million times, but it's very noteworthy. A Medal of Honor recipient, a father, the host of the You're Human podcast, CEO and founder of Own the Dash and Dash Hydrate. Own the Dash also, I had to like look at that up and see what that means, which then I think it's, we just go ahead and note that now. It's, there are two dates on your tombstone, mm -hmm. your birth date and your death date. What really matters is the dash in between. Honestly, that's a great intro for what it seems to be that you focus a lot of energy on. So welcome to the podcast. You know, thank you so much. I, I got to tell you, I've watched your content for a long time and, um, I got to tell you, it's, you are probably the happiest, bubbliest person I've ever met in my entire life. And, you know, to see you actually be that way in person, it's incredible. Thank you. That's okay. So thank you very much. And also then I was going to start with the fact that it's an honor to get to sit down with you. Like, I think that obviously what you have accomplished and are continuing to chase is inspiring as hell. So I appreciate you. It was sometime shortly after moving here to Austin that I like found out who you were. Yeah. And then I don't even know the, I, I don't, I don't know how we got here, but as soon as I realized that you knew who I was back, I was like, Oh, well, we're going to get on the podcast. Yeah, then. Yeah. No, and it's so awesome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go straight back to literally, we're just going to, you know, we're going to do the thing. I we're going to make you a human and we're going to say, excuse me, where were you from? Yeah. What was it like? Yeah. So let's just boom. Go right yeah. there. Yeah. So I, I grew up in a small town in like Columbia, Kentucky. Um, you know, just, I started with my mom and then I ended up living with my dad. Um, and just like, I mean, it was like, you know, we can't, I came, I don't want to say come from nothing because like, you know, nothing, you know, that, that's, that's, that's all relevant. She um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, look, we were middle-class family and, and I grew up, um, start when I live with my mom, like, you know, I grew up in trailer park. I grew up in, you know, all over, right. Never anywhere stable, never anywhere that was like, um, you know, anywhere that was it, it worth writing home about. Right. But then I ended up living with my dad, like probably, 10 or 11, uh, had the opportunity to go live with him mm. and, um, grew up on a farm. And so, you know, grew up on a farm. I was your typical kid, like, um, you know, small school. I think I graduated with maybe a hundred people, um, played all the sports, um, football, basketball, um, track, you know, all the things. Yes. And, you were uh, always, it's, yeah. A hundred is small. Hundred, yeah. That's real small. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, like it was the football team that, you know, um, I was the running back, punter, kicker, kickoff return, punt return, um, and I played defense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Can that you was go the back through team. that again? Because yeah. I actually like football. And I'm trying to figure out what you didn't play. Were yeah. you quarterback too? Nope. nope. Oh, okay. Because so, I was running back, right? So, like, I was a running back. Somebody had to throw the ball to so, you. Yep, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, like, I was a running back on offense. Uh, defense, defense, it would vary. Like, I would either be, um, I could go from safety to tight end to outside linebacker to nose guard, right, depending on what they needed done. And then, um, you know, on, I was a kicker, I was a, a punter and then uh kickoff return and punt return. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you were a jock in high school. Like yeah. that's kind of okay. But, but the, the trailer park thing is also pretty, you know, I, I look back to my own childhood growing up. What's funny is I had a friend that like one close friend that, that lived in a trailer park and I wasn't even, I didn't even know what that was. I just knew that's where my friend lived, you know, yeah. like, I don't even know that I knew and the difference. And anyway, um, so yeah. with childhood, go ahead. Yeah, it was, it was, um, you know, looking, I mean, looking back, like, I mean, I didn't know any different. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, so my, I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, we lived in apartments and then, I, I, you know, we lived in the, you know, we had this single wide trailer that we lived in, um, in this trailer park. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't know, you know, we just didn't, you just didn't know any different, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was just, it, just the way it was. And then, yeah. you know, it was a big deal when we got a double wide, right? Like, I mean, that was like a huge deal. Literally double. Literally double, yeah. right? Yes. Like, yeah, I mean, like double the house. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, but that was just, that's just what you knew. Mm-hmm. Well, so, it, but since sports was a part of your life, it was because oftentimes what can happen is there can be just like, for me, I was kind of just left to run, run the neighborhood, you yeah. know, like oh, yeah, who knows too. where she is. She's not our problem right now. And so, uh, 
was discipline a po- because in sports, if you're going to play all of those different roles and all of these different uh, sports, then there's some discipline in there somewhere. Yeah. Was that always a part of your life growing up or, you know, I, I didn't know. So what I'll say is no, um, not until I live with my dad. Right. Okay. Um, you know, my, my dad life, life on my dad's side was very structured, um, routine, like consistency, you know, all the things that a kid that honestly, that all of us strive for, right. Whether we like it or not, whether we want to admit it or not, like right. we all strive and we all do better mm-hmm. and consistency, you know, all these things that, you know, when you put children in them, they do better in too. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, it wasn't until I moved in with my dad that I really started even considering sports. Right. I didn't, I didn't start playing sports until I was in the eighth grade okay. and uh seventh or eighth grade. And, um, I did that and, uh, I, but I just, what I, I think I found from it was, um, was just the challenge to get better, right? Like I was, I was never, like, I'm not athletic. I don't have an athletic bone in my body. Like I, I just don't. Right. And, um, but I'll tell you what I have is, is I have resiliency, mm-hmm. right. And, and, and like the, the only athleticism that I have or athletic trait that I have is that I will outwork you. Like, I promise you, Mm -hmm. you're not willing to do what it takes to beat me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I learned that early on. Right. And, and, and so that was what I had playing for me. And, you know, my dad, you know, he provided, you know, my dad, my grandparents like provided just, I mean, it was, it was a, a great place to grow up. You know, it taught me so many valuable lessons. I grew up on a farm, Yeah. you know, and growing up on a farm, I mean, your whole life is about others, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like all the animals, I mean, it didn't matter whether it was Christmas. It didn't matter whether it was your birthday. It didn't matter whether it was cold, raining. It didn't matter. These animals need you. Right. And your number one job is to take care of them and then take care of yourself. Yeah. You didn't have the opportunity to just sit around and think about yourself. No. And no, you didn't. Right. Like it it wasn't, it it, was, you just didn't like you always had something to do. There was always something to do. There was always something to fix. You know, we had 300 acres. We had, you know, probably 100 head of beef cattle. We grew tobacco growing up. We had, you know, uh, all these things. And so there was always something to do. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep moving on because there's just so much like current life I want to get into. So I did want to get a better understanding because I didn't even have one of like some of where you come from. But there's just a lot more stuff that I want to unpack. But it's cool to know that some of that stuff would maybe my my round out of, of childhood type stuff was sounds like discipline kind of you got good exposure to it at a relatively young age to mm-hmm. know that even like you said we're all striving towards maybe we don't necessarily love that we thrive in routine and yet as human beings we just thrive in routine yeah every everything that i've done to this point today it it, it all ties back to um probably the first 15 years of my life in some way, shape or form, uh, in some way, shape or form, every single thing that I do or that anybody knows about me, it, 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 it ties back to it. So you think those values got established at some point throughout that? I I think the values, I think the, the suffering, like the, you know, um, you know, when I was in middle school, um, no, nah, probably later, later elementary school, you know, we didn't have anything. I mean, I honestly, I thought Goodwill was a brand, um, you know, and, yeah. and, and, you know, there were like, I remember just like getting picked on just because of that, uh, especially by these two kids. Like I still to this day remember their names and I, I remember them and like, I remember every aspect of them mm-hmm. and I remember what it felt like to, to, to not be, you know, to, to, because of your social or economical status to, to, to be, you know, and, and it wasn't that one, they would, they would take on one-on-one. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a ganged up. Right. And mm-hmm. so I remember that. And, and so everything that I've ever done since then comes from all these little things. Like I, like, it's crazy. And people like, oh, you know, you maybe you hold a grudge. I don't know how you hold a grudge from when you're, you know, 
eight years old, six years old, seven mm-hmm. years old, right? Like, but I remember those two guys. One of them ends up like I'll still look them up sometimes. One of them is prison, mm-hmm. right? Jail. Uh, you know, the other one is just not doing. You know, working at his dad's business, right? Yeah. And and, and never got anywhere. But I appreciate those times because it is. It, it, it all ties back to, to why I do what I do today. Yeah. It just makes me think of the fact that, like, we can take any experience and make it productive if we so choose. That, yes, 110%. Right? Like, that is, you know, and, and I don't want to just harp on that, but I want to harp on, you know, the discipline that my dad taught me, mm-hmm. the, the, the lack of emotion my dad taught me, right? Like, the, the, the way to control emotions, right? Controlled emotion is, is powerful. Uncontrolled emotion is dangerous. Mm-hmm. And so, like, all these aspects. And so I don't want to just harp on, like, oh, you know, I'm just this guy out there trying to prove myself because, you know, some dumbass in the eighth grade, right? But, but I wanted to, like, I just think that, like, the first 15 years of my life, like, yeah. I was so fortunate to get all these realms of experiences yeah. that like it, it, it has, you know, look, you have to struggle yep. in order for you to ever improve or to grow. Yeah. Well, and you're using them as fuel. And even if earlier mm-hmm. stages of you maybe use them as fuel and there was more resentment there or grudge or whatever, and yeah. maybe now you've built an, I think it's completely okay to go, you know, I needed to stack up some proof to self yeah. that you were wrong. Yeah. Cool. You yeah. know? Yeah. And then to be able to work to forgive them and say, okay, you know, you don't get to have any sort of role in my life today, but also they gave you fuel. Oh, so 100%. we get to appreciate them. Yeah. Look, I mean, yeah, there, there were times that, you know, in, in, in the early years of, you know, going through high school, uh-huh. that it was guys like that that gave me fuel, mm-hmm. right? People like that, that fueled me, mm-hmm. like, you know, tell me I can't, and, and I'll show you that I will. And even to this day, maybe it's not the kids being bullies, but even yeah. to this day, I have full faith that if any, you even, I don't have an athletic bit in my body yeah. and yet I'm going to go do this triathlon yeah. this weekend. Yeah. So say what you will, but even still, yeah. there's that part of you that goes, if there's something that I think may be an area that I could improve on, call it a weakness. I don't really like that term, but yeah. whatever, then like, yeah. okay, watch this. Yeah. hundred percent. I love it. Okay. So I do, like I said, I've got a whole lot of like more current mm-hmm. stuff I want to dive into because I have a lot of curiosity about a lot of things that you say, which are awesome from what I've seen. So I'm excited about that, but you did get into the military and I do want to touch on that. Was that something that you did? Like, were you 18 years old? Boom, there you go. Was that, you know, when did all that happen? You know, I, I, I don't know. Right. Like I, I never thought about going to the military before the day that I really joined. Wow. Um, you know, I, I, I was just walking through my high school classroom one day and, and, you know, I, I had put in the, the publishers or whatever, the clearing house that you have to do to, in order to go play college sports, you know, all those things. And that, that was kind of my goal, right? Like I didn't know anything else. You know, you come from a small town and, you know, sometimes we underestimate the lack of options or opportunities that we're even aware of. Absolutely. And so, you know, it's not like, it's like, oh, well, you got the internet, so everything's out there now. Well, it's not, it's just not that case, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, you know, you can't ever underestimate that. And so what I'll say is, is, is I, I didn't know anything about it and I don't know why, I don't know what, what made me just say that day I was going to do it. But, you know, I, I, there was a Marine recruiter in my lunchroom this one day and I went up to him, started asking him a lot of smart out questions. And finally he looked at me and he said, you know, what are you going to do when you get out of high school? And I said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go play football somewhere. And I was, I, I probably could have played a D2 school, right? I'm not going to sit here and like make some crazy story. Like every other, every other guy that I know would do like, oh, I could have started <laughs> yeah, D1. Sure, D1. You know, yeah, everybody yeah, was yeah. wanting me, right? Like, no, <laughs> false. I was young. I graduated when I was 17. So I already had that playing against me. I, you know, I would have had to red shirted. I would have had to have busted my ass. To, to eat, maybe to, get to, to start to maybe, somewhere. Yeah. To maybe even dress somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, and so one day, like... He, uh, he was there. And so like, he, I, he said, what are you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna play football. And he said, oh, that's what I would do too. Cause you'd never make it as a Marine. And so I walked off and, and I was like, Phew, man, you know, that's, that's what I want to be part of. Right. I want to be part of something that not everybody can be part of. And, and I went back to him and I said, I'll sign up today. And so we went and signed up. I, I wanted to go infantry. You know, I think there was a piece of it to, to realistically that, you know, I, I can't say that I knew what 9-11 meant, 
but what I did know is I do remember the feeling that I had when, when, you know, uh, these people attacked my people. And when I watched, you know, I remember, I remember in the, in the eighth grade, mm -hmm. uh, Rudy Rimpro, my art class pulling in, you know, remember those carts that had two, sh two layers on them and they had that TV on the top. It had the strap over it. And I remember him screwing it into the, how the, many the, listeners do you think won't know what you're talking about? Right? Literally a lot. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Like we might be a little old. Continue. continue. Right. And so he like had to, there, there wasn't Wi-Fi. <laughs> You know, it's like you had to like screw the uh, the cord into the wall. Yeah, it was a very large. You know television. what I'm talking about, right? Oh, large yeah. television. Oh yeah, and she's three dimensional. Yeah, because you didn't have TVs in all your. I mean, you know. Right. So anyways, right? Yeah, you cart them in. Got you, it. You cart them in, and mm -hmm. so I remember watching the second tower fall, and um, you know, I I remember, I remember watching people jump to their death, mm -hmm. and. Look, I, I didn't know what it meant. I was in the eighth grade, right? Um, I, I barely, you know, knew how to tie my shoes. And, but, I, I, you know, I just think that that feeling is in all of us of understanding that, you know, I, I didn't have to know those people, but people attacked my people. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go make somebody pay for it. And because we, we're, we are the United States of America mm -hmm. and nobody messes with their family, mm -hmm. right? And so I think there was a piece of that and... I went, my dad signed the papers for me. I left June 18th, 2006 to boot camp, uh, went to, went to Paris Island, um, graduated boot camp mm -hmm. and then went to school of infantry, became an infantryman. And then I turned around and went to sniper school and became a school trained sniper, uh, for the Marine Corps. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty badass. It was fun. I will say the Patriot thing. One thing to note is just, I think it's, you know, not only have you served, but you've had some time lapse between that and where you are right now. And I think what's really cool is what I do see from you today is that your belief in our people mm -hmm. is potentially bigger than ever. I don't know, but it's yeah. certainly very real. Yeah. Now it makes sense to me. Okay. Right. You know, you eighth know, grade, you didn't get it. Uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, but even, even when I joined the Marine Corps, I didn't get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, I joined, you know, it was an awesome job. I mean, how do you not, I mean, you, you, I mean, you get to do, I mean, what, what 18 year old yeah. doesn't want to get paid to shoot guns and, and, you know, to, to do this. Right. And so, uh, you know, and then I, I, but, but really understanding what, what role you play. Right. And why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, you used to think that you fought and there was this one battle that I was in this, this one distinct, you know, um, uh, moment. And it really showed me that, like, I didn't, I, I didn't hate, like, you, you, people think they fight because of hate, right? Like, there's so many people out there right now who their causes, and this is why you see them fizzle out. You see them die out because they're built on hate. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate something else. Sure. That is a, that is a fuse that's going to die out. Yeah. You will never, ever, ever fully be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish just because you're going against something else. Yep. It never worked. Yep. And it realized, it made me realize that I didn't hate what was in front of me. I just loved so much what was behind me. Mm -hmm. And it was a very significant moment in my life. And, um, and it was about what are you going to do with that now? Right. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, today I'm a firefighter, right? Like I still serve. Um, I think you are with one of my one of my buddies. Uh, I think, um, and of course now, right this minute, his last name is Clark. Why am I? Oh blanking? yeah, yeah, Clark. Yeah, yeah. yes. There we yeah. go. You go by last yeah. names anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Clark, He's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. Right. Anyway. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I still I still try to I still try to get on. You know, I, I'm not full time. I, I do part time at a station. Uh -huh. um, I'm also uh, I work at a volunteer station as well. Uh -huh. So you know, I, I'm always running calls, and and because I, I think it's important, right? Uh -huh. um, I think it's important. So you feel like you have a much better, more clear understanding now than you did whenever you made those decisions early. So why are you so patriotic? Because I love people. I love good. You know, like people think patriotism is like, oh, just America. You got to love your flag. You got to be, you know, that's what they see it as, right? Sure. They see it as conservative. Like, like they have put patriotism mm -hmm. with 
being a conservative. Sure. Which, which is, is already just like, which bonkers. is already just yeah. nuts. Yeah. Well, how did we get here? Um, but it's really, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what is, and I've seen this, I was in, I went to Ukraine um, back when the war kicked off uh -huh. with Russia. And I'll tell you what I've seen that, that made so much sense, because you hear so many people talk about, well, why is this our problem? Why is America got to get involved? Uh -huh. And I, I got to see it firsthand. And I'll tell you why America has to get involved. We are the only country on the face of the planet that fights for good, not just what's in our best interest. And I'll prove it, right? Like, say what you want to about going into Iraq. We didn't take their oil when we could have. Mm -hmm. We were trying to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let the governments, don't let the government's um, uh, reasoning or whatever you think that they're doing it for represent the men and women who wear the nation's cloth. They don't align. Mm -hmm. Their strategies and their reasons and how they handle things don't align. Yep. Afghanistan, same way. You look, Russia's going into Ukraine because that's good for them. They're going to take their land. You see this with Israel right now. All these yeah. other countries are fighting right now because that's what's in their best interest. We go over to fight for good. We put women, women, the first generation of women through school, 20 years when we were in Afghanistan, that was because men and women believed in this idea of good mm -hmm. and to help good people. And so that's what it's about is, is it's, I don't call it patriotism. I call it peopleism. Yeah. And the world is pretty simple. There's two types of people. There's good and evil. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the majority of people are good. Do you believe that someone that maybe you would think is, has currently evil acts is someone who actually could be good. Yeah. So here's, here's, yeah. Well, here's what I'll tell you is, is I, I, it depends on, it depends on what you talk about an evil act, right? Like I don't look at somebody robbing a store to get their food as an evil, act. as an evil act, totally. right? Like we gotta be very careful with what we put evil with. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, now look, somebody murders somebody, right? Uh, like uh, that's an evil act and they, they need to be dealt with. Right. Um, th th there's things like that, right? Like I think that anybody, anybody on the face of the planet, non-negotiable, if you hurt our children, you should be killed right then. That is the most, that is the most pure. valuable, pure mm -hmm. thing that we have as people. Mm -hmm. It's our children. Mm -hmm. And if you mess with our children, you're done. Like you do not deserve to exist ever again, mm -hmm. non-negotiable. Right. And so I just, I look at these things and, and, and life is really, really simple, but people don't want it to be simple because it doesn't, it doesn't feel good all the time. Yeah. Right. And so, but I just believe in people. I just believe in people. So this wasn't even something I was intending to ask, but I think one of the things that stands out to me is that you say a lot of things with a lot of conviction. Yeah. Like you seem to Something that is a very common struggle for many is fear of what you will think if I say yeah. or do a thing. And you seem to say things that you know not everybody's going to agree with yeah. and like with conviction. And so has, has that always been within you? What have you, I mean, where does that come from? Because you seem to stand pretty firmly where you stand. I, I do. And you know what, like, um, does that bother you whenever it doesn't? I mean, does it, e do you even really? I don't, like, I don't like, so, so when, when people base what they do off of what everybody else thinks, mm -hmm. um, like criticism is no different than just, we put this emotional word with as criticism. Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than negative advice. It's advice you don't like to hear, mm -hmm. but we put this because we don't like to hear it and it doesn't feel good, we've put this other word to, to, to label it as criticism. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're criticizing me. Was it true? Mm -hmm. Could it make you better? Maybe mm -hmm. you should listen to it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I don't, I don't take advice. Uh, I don't take criticism from people I don't take advice from. Right? Totally. Um, and and that's such a simple concept. And yet... If it it's not something you've implemented before, it's pretty revolutionary, you know, to be like, no, wait, it doesn't make any sense to listen yeah. to. No, that doesn't check. Because here's what I'll tell you is, is 
you 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 might not agree with me mm-hmm. and or anybody might not I, I, fine mm. like if i'm standing here right now I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example is if if i'm standing here right now mm-hmm. and i was like hey this fireplace is on my left and you're like no dakota it's not it's on the right mm-hmm. and i'm like no it's on the left we're both right mm mm-hmm. So that there is, there is so much to be said that like two people can be right Mm -hmm. based off of where they're standing. Yeah. But how, like, but what are we trying to accomplish from that? So many people, they go into conversations without a purpose, Mm -hmm. without what are they trying to gain from it? They have conversations with no intentions of gaining anything. Yep. And it's almost like driving your car without having a destination. How stupid is that? Yeah. And so I just think, like, I believe, and I say the word I believe a lot. And I say it because I want you to know that I believe this with every moral fiber of my being. Yeah, there's something behind it. I will listen to you. I respect you. And no matter what, Claire, like, all these people, you know, you were talking about people, like, hitting me on Instagram, stuff like that. Yeah. Here's the deal. Like, I strive every day to be an unconditional person in a conditional world. And so no matter what, Claire, whether we agree or not, whether you hate me or not, whether you treat me bad or not, that's not going to dictate how, if I'm going to treat you like a good person, Mm -hmm. because no matter what, I strive to be a good person. I want to be a good human being. I want to make the world better. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be conditional on whether you deserve it or not. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's going to be, Conditional because I want to give you that. Mm-hmm. You can do what you want to with it, yeah. right? And and so, like, no matter what, like, I don't base who I've gotten to this point in life to where I don't base who I am or my beliefs off of what you think they should be. I base them off and I'm going to be unconditional for you because I know it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It makes a ton of sense to me because I feel like what I also see then is this like tenacity from you. Yeah. And that is something that I think you have to be pretty like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just like, it's, it's when you start to feel like you've got purpose behind a thing. And, and I, and I love too, because even though you're saying you go into it knowing what you want to gain from it, right? Like you go into the conversation, which then leads me to curiosity about, okay, so this is a conversation we're sitting down for. What is the gain? And then there's also this like through experience for me, I can identify that like, what did I do in my, cause I I think you may know alcoholism is a part of my story. right? Right. And so, uh, in coming into recovery, I had to be taught a lot of new concepts and, um, was able to be shown that a lot of my actions, one, didn't align with what I really, really wanted. Um, I was making messes. I wasn't living with intention, things like that. But also I was living from a very selfish place. So it taught me I have to be more selfless if I want to be okay, which is kind of this, you know, it's like, okay, so that's selfish of you to be selfless. And yet that seems to really work. Yeah. You put yourself first. Uh, Do Well, I mean... You Definitely. Have, I understand that like, cause you have to. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself for sure. Right. Like for sure. But in any situation that I'm in, in any interaction that I'm in, I think it's always, um, what can you give here now? Of course, mm. within reason, but what's beautiful about that is then there are all these other principles like honesty. You know, I even had a conversation with an individual this morning who just outright asked, and and they're great, you know, but what does it take to get me? I mentioned that we were coming here to do this. And well, what does it take for me to get on? I said, that's not how that works. And they said, okay, how does that work? And I said, okay, I guess this is a moment for me to be honest. You know, you have to have done an action, yeah. done something at what, that makes me go, that's a conversation I'm going to chase, you know? Yeah. And so it's just interesting because I could have said any variation of anything that wasn't just the truth. And the truth is, well, because something has occurred in your life that made me go, I want to record a conversation. Yeah. You know, that's the truth. So not but, that those things haven't taken place in your life. I just don't know about them. But shouldn't, so I'm going to, I'm going to take this a little bit further, but yeah. shouldn't that be how you look at everyone that mm-hmm. you give your time to in life? Mm. Like everyone that you spend time with, uh-huh. shouldn't they add some type of value to you? Right. Like, like, you know, every, you only have limited time. Yeah. 
And your time's valuable. Yeah. And people who waste your time don't value your time. Right. Yeah, and if you don't value your time, no one else will. I, yeah, if, if so I don't think like, my time is just valuable, like this, you don't either. Just like this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's the same thing in life. Well, this is actually funny. I do have a question literally yeah. on my notes here for you that ties in well to this. And that was um, because we're going to get into more of this stuff. But but uh, you because of how you operate in life, I would venture to assume that you are intentional with your surroundings, the people that mm-hmm. are around you. And so if that is true, then someone who looks to someone like you and says, I like that. I like the way that guy behaves, the way he thinks, whatever. I'd like to be around more people like that. Like what is an action that you would take or you would encourage someone else to take to be an attractive person? You know, if you're, if you're controlling your environment, how could someone who says, I want to be there, um, what is something they could do to add value? Yeah. I mean, look, you know, look, I I believe again, (laughs) I keep saying that word because somebody pointed it out to me. That's why the only reason the I'm bringing it up. Part. I believe, yeah. Somebody pointed it out to me two days ago. Um, oh, no. Now yeah. it's all you hear. And, yeah, it is all I hear. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you got to put yourself first because before you can attract good people, yeah. you got to be a good person. Yeah. Because let me tell you what good people don't do. They don't surround themselves with people that aren't good. And so the only way you do that is by starting, look, Nobody being successful, nobody out there crushing it mm-hmm. wants to be around mediocrity mm-hmm. or laziness, mm-hmm. right? We're all, every one of us is fighting laziness. Mm-hmm. We are, it doesn't matter what you do. We're, we're all fighting the same doubts, guilt, stru- frustrations. Like we're all fighting all, the, it's the same shit in your head as it, as it is in my head. Totally. The difference is, is is do we take, what do we take action on? Mm -hmm. Right. And and so like me, like you see, I walk in, I've got three people sitting out here right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this, like those three people, um, if you can't beat me, don't even get in the ring with them. Mm -hmm. Like, like I promise you in that, that, that group that's sitting out there, the weakest link is me. Everywhere I look, I mean, like, you know, Andrea, Mm -hmm. if I could, if I could train, yeah, if I could train 50% of what she does, I'd be somebody. Keegan, that's a professional athlete right there. Uh That guy, if I said tomorrow that I wanted to go try to climb Mount Everest, he wouldn't hesitate. He's there. Yeah. Right. Like you look at like, so what it, what it comes down to is, is number one is where are you spending your time? Uh-huh. Cause you don't find good people in a bar. Right. You don't find product. I think good people can be there. They can just be a little lost. Oh, well, no, no. So I'm not saying, so yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking about them. In you this don't, mo- I see what you're saying. In that moment. Like, yeah. I'm not, so I, I look, I'm not, I don't look at them. I'm not looking at them as like, are they good or evil? Right. Like, yes. I, I, so let me, let me rephrase that. Yeah. hundred percent. Yes. hundred percent. There's a great people in a bar. Yes. You're not going to find anybody that's going to make you better in a bar. Yeah. Right. And if they're more than once a week, you definitely ain't going to find anybody that's got goals big enough to where they're going to make you better. Yeah. Period. Right. I think you're right. As someone who for years yeah. was that person, I think you're right. What were you with, accomplishing then? With, right? Yeah. I mean, n- nothing to the degree of what I have. the capa- yeah. Like I look at life today. I'm like this version of self is I can't believe I have access to it. Yeah. That's cool. Well, so then you think that they are individuals that are bringing you up. Mm-hmm. And so what has attracted you to them is that they are performing in life at a level that makes you go, I want something that you have. Yeah. Why do you think they're hanging out with you? Um, I mean, I think we all add value to each other, right? Like, you know, a, a team is a team, right? Tom yeah. Brady wouldn't have what he has without everybody else, whether it's special teams, whether it's the trainers, like it, it takes a whole team to function. Yep. And, so okay. I add value to them as well, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and and that's what it comes back to is, but how often do most people, you know, if I, if I, if you went to a restaurant and you were going to that restaurant and you wanted to, you're going to eat there, mm-hmm. and they couldn't tell you what food they had, yeah. how, like how often would you go there? So how many people are walking around and they don't even know the 
what they bring to the table. Yeah. Because they haven't thought about it enough. I, I think that so many people have just not put thought into who they are. Yes. And and look, like I know my weaknesses. I know I I'm fine with that. I'm not I mean, do I try to get better at it? hundred percent. But like, guess what I find? I find people that where I'm the weakest at. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I know you hate the word weak, but like, you know, I don't look at it in an emotional way. Mm-hmm. I look at it as far as like a, you know, a, a way of, hey, here's places I can improve. Right. right and right. so, you know, yeah, I mean, like, I think you just first off, you got to start spending your time in the right places. Mm-hmm. You, you got to start really putting some thought into who you are and yeah. what you want and where you want to go and what your goals are and find people and surround yourself with people that support they don't, when I say support those goals, it doesn't mean a cheerleader. It yeah. means people who are trying to achieve the same thing or who have achieved that thing. Yeah. I love that and agree. And I think what's cool is we probably have very different stories there as well about how we came to places of, oh, because there is a part of, I've seen some content of yours posted about, like, there was a time in which you gained weight. Oh, yeah. So you grew up with some discipline. You then went into the military. You clearly, like, you don't get to be a Medal of Honor recipient without doing some really esteemable action. Yeah. And then did this weight gain take place after that? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I think there's three, um, three, three lanes for people, right? When you talk about growth, you talk about um, maturity, all these things, right? Uh-huh. And And I think... You've got the physical, mental, and then you got the emotional. Okay. And so for me, look, I was physically, you know, when I went to the military, physically, I, I was there. Uh, mentally strong, right? right? Yeah. Um, emotionally, I did not mature at all. And got out. And, I mean, look, my, my whole team was killed in Afghanistan, right? And then uh, on top of it, then, I, you know, the, the biggest failure of my life that, you know, people, usually people get the opportunity to, to hide their, their darkest moments, their biggest failures. They, they get to literally like, you know, most people don't know about the, the biggest failures in most people's lives, right? Publicly. Yeah. Publicly. Yeah. And then I get a call from the president of the United States. This is, Hey, we're going to, we're going to get, you're going to be receiving the medal of honor. And so now the worst day of my life, the biggest failure of my life is now it's, it's in history books. And so, yeah, it took me a long time to process that, right? That's, I cannot imagine the turmoil that a company, like, this is something yet again that it's everywhere. You Mm -hmm. hear it all, like, people, that's what people know you for, right? Uh Which, so then to know that that was accompanied by a lot of other negative emotions, negative I mean, it's 100%. It's a 100, like, look, like, my teammates, the most important people in my life at that time. Right, right. Like, and this is what people. This is where people mess up, right? There's only freedom in truth. There's only true healing. You know, people want to throw this healing thing away, or out there right now. But like, there's only true healing in truth. Yeah. Right? Well, and we do need to heal. And I and I really yes, think I, let's take a look at this. Like, when are we mentally masturbating, and when are we changing our oh, actions? Yes. Yeah. You I know, know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, I, I can am. read every book. I can watch all the YouTube videos. I can talk about growth mindset and whatever. Yeah. And if my actions do not align with any of it, it's a joke. But if they do, and it can be a trajectory, it's not an overnight fix. Give yourself the grace to be human and imperfect. Yes, yeah, sure. And yet, action. That's what we have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Three lanes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm with you, right? Like, 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 why do you get an x-ray if your leg's hurting? So you can see if it's broke or not. Yeah. Right. But so many people, what they do is, is they change the truth because they don't like how it feels. Instead of going and looking at exactly what the truth is, yeah. they change it because it doesn't feel good. Right. And so you know, look, I get people all the time. I I went to, I mean, I would go to talk therapy. I mean, you imagine how much therapy I had to go to. And during the days following. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, I was, I was brought home from Afghanistan, um, Thanksgiving and put straight into a rehab center. And, um, why were you put into rehab? Well, because they just wanted to, you know, PTSD. They wanted to, uh, you know, I, you know, lost my whole team over there. I've been in, you know, 60, 80 gunfights. It lasted, you know, a while, and, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of combat and, and, 
And I, I, you know, I just, I, was I struggling? Of course I was struggling. But like, if yeah. you go stick your finger in a light socket and you get shocked, like, are you surprised? No. No, exactly. Yeah. And so was I struggling? Yeah, I was struggling. Um, but anyways, they put me in this rehab center and, and, you know, so like talk therapy, I've done counseling, all that. And I'm not saying it doesn't help, but yeah. even like, this isn't just Dakota Myers opinion. Like statistically talk therapy is ineffective as far as helping. Right. I, I think it maybe makes you feel good in the moment, but so does eating a donut and then you crash. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but there's no real progress from it. Mm -hmm. Um, there is some, but statistically it, it ain't, it ain't a real good result. Um, but what I'll, I'll say is, is I was just, I was lost. I was broken. You know, people are like, oh, you're a hero, you know, but you know, it wasn't your fault. You're not the one that pulled the trigger. And it's like, I got you. You're right. I, I did not go kill my teammates, but I failed. I went in that day to go get them out alive. I went in that day and I believe, and I live with every moral fiber of my being that you either get them out alive or you die trying. And if you didn't die trying, we didn't try hard enough. Mm. And now people can be like, oh, that's, that's, you know, unrealistic expectations or whatever they want to, to say to, 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 you know, to soften it. Sure. The reality is I went in there to get my teammates out alive. My teammates were dead when I got to them, right? Period. So it's a failure. You can't change that. And if you do change that, then, then you don't ever really get the lessons from it. And so, you know, for me, you know, you could put the blame on, well, you know, that's combat, that's the Taliban, well, whatever. No, no, I didn't meet what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It's a failure. And so it took me a long time to finally, like, absorb that. Okay. And um, during that time, I mean, I was a wreck. I mean, when I tell you drinking a bottle, bottle and a half a crown a day, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the news. You know, the turmoil is just, I mean, I could send out a tweet and next thing you know, it's, it's making the news. Right. Yeah. And so. Gosh. And you just probably felt like a fraud. I did. Yeah, I did. And, and that's why, I don't, you know, I, but there, I understand there were, they didn't give me the medal of honor for my teammates dying. They gave me the medal of honor for other things. Right. And yes. And so while there were other things that were accomplished that day, and I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think I deserve it, but either way, it's not up to me. But either way, whenever I look at that medal, and that medal doesn't define me. That medal was one day in my life, yeah. and it just shows that like, hey, because I, I believe in life, everything's black and white. I, I don't believe there's any gray area, and I think that people who live in the gray area, they have anxiety and depression. The closer you can get to black and white, the, the better it is. Yeah. And, and so I believe that decisions... Here's the equation to figure out everything in life. And I've got a new book coming out, so we can plug that. Okay. Um, it, it'll be coming out at the end of this year, but it's um, decisions uh -huh. plus actions uh -huh. equal results. Duh. Right? Yes. And so. Which I say duh because I've tested this enough and like agree with you and yet understand that this is something people are still really struggling with. So yes. They're really struggling. Yes. It's, but let me tell you why. Because they don't look at those results. Yeah. And they don't think about the decision, even not, even not making a decision and not making an action is still equals the result. Absolutely. If I try to turn away from the thing and pretend that the thing is not real, that there. doesn't make it not real. Yeah. In fact, it often just pisses it off. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then eventually I'm going to have to deal with it. Mm. Uh, the beautiful thing is that we are resilient creatures and pain is a great motivator. So eventually that that pain gets big enough. We do something most of the time. Hopefully I will say this. This does. There's a quote from some some piece of content I heard from you that I loved. That was just you said PTSD, anxiety and depression. They're not terminal illnesses. They're injuries. And so uh, that's what you're speaking to right and it now. Is, right. And, you know, like, you know, Veterans have done the best at making it like their PTSD is worse than everybody else's. They have like done this awesome job at, well, you don't get what it's like to be shot at. So like, because we've been shot at or because we've watched our friends die, like that's any different than anybody else's bad day, right? The, the reality is, is your worst day or my worst day is no more significant than anybody else's worst day listening to this. Right. The reality is, is why are we trying to out victim each other? Right. I can't imagine what you've gone through. You can't imagine this. I hope you don't ever have to. I don't want to imagine that. But I'll tell you this. We know what a bad day is. So how do we help each other out? Right. 
it's so simple, but everybody wants to make their trauma. They, I hate that word too. I get they, it. They want to make their trauma, their identity. Yep. And that's what's, because then that's why they don't get better. Yeah. Because if they do that, they lose their identity. Yeah. And I think it's, you've probably developed enough reps at this point of navigating this well, even though that situation was one in which you would say it was, it was quite turbulent and yeah. you didn't always deal with it well and you yeah. did gain weight and you were oh, drinking I, a listen, bunch. I, and... I mean, I was a terrible person. I mean, I was a terrible, like, I, I don't have a lot of regrets in my life, but I regret the person that I was because I wasted a lot. I hurt a lot of people. I hurt a ton of people. Um, but let me say this. You'll work so hard to make up for that though. So I don't know. I we... will. I will hurt, hurt, hurt people, hurt people. Yep. Yep. And, and, I was and they a don't lot of know people. they're hurt. You know, yeah. the, the, uh, one of the phrases we use that I love in recovery is we shall not, uh, we shall not regret the past nor wish to close the door on it. And I love that because I have to reflect back on and go, you know, there have been moments since I've cleaned my act up. Yeah. Uh, and it gone like, oh my gosh, you know, like it can be hard to look back at some of the things you've done. And yet yeah. I have to go, I can clearly identify in which this gives me fuel to then do better, do better, be an example, help others, all of those things. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's lame. That sucks that I, I did something bad or something bad happened to me or whatever it is. Okay. Now what? Yeah. Now what? Now what? What are you going to do with it? Yeah. So, uh, there's, you've got so many, like, by, you know, bits that I just love that. So, uh, one of them, I, I've got a few different areas. Okay. We're just going to keep going. Yeah. If you are scared of conflict, somebody who's not will take what you've got. 100%. I love that as yeah. someone who identifies heavily as the was scared of conflict mm -hmm. person. Yeah. And I'm really stepping further and further into the, mm -mm, that didn't work. That doesn't work. I got to stop doing that. Can you kind of elaborate on, like, what is that? Yeah, and, you know, conflict, I'm not saying, hey, you got to go out and start punching people in the face or, hey, you have to engage in arguments. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. Right. Um, what I'm saying is, is, look, if you're not comfortable with conflict, then first off, you can't even get out of your own head. Yeah. You Like, you better be able to fight those voices in your head. Like, yeah, you can't even get in there. I mean, think about this. It is a conflict from the time you get out of bed in the morning yeah. to get out. So you better get comfortable with conflict because what, what I'll tell you this is, is what, yeah, what you're not willing to fight for, yeah. somebody else is willing to take. Yeah. And it always starts with one thing, one area, and it's your peace. It always starts with your peace, uh -huh. right? Whether it's your boss, whether it's your job, whether it's in your relationship, you know, the people who... Like, usually the people, they, they get comfortable. And I believe that comfort is the enemy yeah. of progress, happiness, and anything good, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, conflict is, is, is the reality of it. Conflict is if you're not willing to fight for your home, well, then you're going to live worried that somebody's going to break in your home. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you, you know what I mean? Like, if you're, how many people never live because they're so scared of dying. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not willing to fight for your life, if you're not willing to fight for your happiness, if you're not willing to fight for your ideas, yeah. I mean, I, I call these people fence sitters, right? Well, and to me too, you know, these, these concepts seem broad to some degree. And then I think to the, something as simple as you know, this conflict, right? So I have to be able to get inside of my own brain and navigate that internal conflict because like you said, no one escapes. I've never met a human who is not bargaining with themselves every day. Every day. And and yet you, you win the argument because you've developed reps and belief. You had to start somewhere. It, anyway, then I think let's take it a step further because another huge area we talk like I'm just so engrossed with health and, and yeah. aware of like, yes, I've spent 13 years being obsessed with nutrition and obsessed with movement patterns and all of these are energy systems, you name it, you know? And so that's so wonderful that in my profession today, I get to use those things to help other people yeah. love it. Yeah. Crazy about it. Really stepping into this reality that like the thing in between our ears is, is the more like, it's just, I'm just learning so much about it, you know, yeah. and so I'm passionate about it, but the communication piece, you know, like if I can't navigate this thing in here, 
Sorry, then I can't yeah. go go. I can't have a respectful communication with you. You know, like I mean, it's just conflict. Communication is like the ability to to navigate conflict well. Yeah. To be able to sit down with another individual and say we're coming from different perspectives. Maybe we don't entirely see eye to eye. I don't know how this is going to go. Like you not only have to be someone who's willing to approach that conversation or whatever with anyone that you give a shit about. Mm -hmm. And then in return, you have to be a human that's capable of receiving that and navigating that, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, communication is, is two. it's, there's very two important pieces. Uh -huh. There is uh, transmitting and receiving Yeah, and we are terrible at receiving. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what is it? So if we're terrible at receiving and you've done any sort of paying attention to this, how would you, if you were to just give somebody like a better way to receive? I mean, put some thought into it. Like most people don't want to receive because they haven't put enough thought into what, what they're even trying to accomplish in the conversation. Right. Like, so it's uncomfortable. Like it's an insecurity of like, if you came at me about something mm -hmm. and I just stuck to what I knew, mm -hmm. It's just like they, they, they get in this loop of just they're, they're always defending themselves. Yeah. So openness, openness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look, look, if you I think the dumbest thing ever and, and, you know, probably my fear every year, I thought about it like, you know, with it being a new year and all that, um, I think it would be a wasted year if I looked back at every decision that I made and I didn't say I would have done that different. It means I didn't grow. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I did what I, I did what I did in that moment. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm not saying I was right. I'm just saying that I could have done it better. Mm -hmm. Right. How I talked to people, how I treated people, like, like all these things. And I just think that we've all got to be okay with saying, Hey, um, we can be better. We want to be better and we want to be better for other people and we want to be better for good and we want to make the world a better place like all these things it's about people and and like i just don't think people want to listen sometimes because they're so scared of being wrong mm -hmm. and it's like wrong and right like successes and failures like they're nothing more than moments in time well and would you agree that whenever people have shown you where you've been wrong that you appreciate that tremendously well you would like, think right right i think you would think. Yeah. You would think. But it doesn't feel good, right? <laughs> no. No, but I can I can think of even, re but I have a better ability to receive today and to yeah. listen. But I can think of recent experiences where someone has brought to my attention a way in which I showed up in an experience, in a situation and, and said like, well, that made me, un you know, that to them made them uncomfortable for whatever reason. And I receive it and then I get to sit with it and go, my, I was, that's because my ego or my pride or my fear, whatever any one of those things was, was cropping up its ugly head for any it, conditioned reason. But it could Thank also, you for showing me. But it could also be how the person approaches it, right? Yeah. yeah. I say some very, very strong statements. Yeah. Look, people have their opinion of me on the internet. I think you do it very tactfully. Well, but because you know what? Because I, I, I know what I want to accomplish from it, right? Yeah. I think in life you can choose, you got to choose which one you want to be. Do you want to be liked or do you want to be trusted? Uh-huh. Absolutely. And so what's the difference, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm not saying like sometimes people like the trusted side. I'm, I want to be trusted. I've chosen that path and that is who I want to be. And I want to like people call me when they need me. Nobody calls me to go hang out. Like I'm telling you, they don't call me. Hey, like we're going to go hang out at this house and we're going to do this or whatever, whatever people do that. <laughs> when they hang out like right, socially, sure. right? I have no clue. Yeah. Um, like literally no clue. You have no clue and you love your life, right? Oh, I, I, I wake up every day and I literally, Stoked. I, I, I got up this morning and, and you know, my day is literally broken in, into blocks. Mm -hmm. I got four blocks all day long, like from 5 a.m. this morning until 9 a.m. I have been training my ass off. I just took a shower in a public shower somewhere yeah. to come here and, and I'm going to be here and I've got work. I mean, like it's, it's, it, it's yeah, I wake out, up yeah. every single day, the best day of my life. And I don't have a ton of people around me. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And so what I tell you is, is look, if you're not willing, if you don't want to take, call it criticism or negative advice, or if you're not willing to listen to the people that are around you, then get around different people. Yeah. 
you know, and so I think the most selfish thing that we can do as human beings is to compromise what you need to hear in the truth. Yep. We compromise that because we'd rather not hurt your feelings or we'd rather be liked by you and not make you mad at us. That's selfish. Yeah. If I love you, I'm going to do whatever I can for you. And you ask me a question, I'm going to give you the answer. And I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, you know what, Claire, I love you. Um, but let me say this. You need to, like, I, this, is this how you want to appear? Show if it here, is, yeah. fine. Uh, like, I'm going to love you no matter what. Mm -hmm. But, like, how can I help you? fix this one thing, mm -hmm. right? How can I be better for you to help you fix this one thing? Cause I know your potential. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that type of relationship, then you're hanging and you're, 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 you're spending your time mm -hmm. on the wrong people. Yeah. I got to yeah, expect I, them. Like I promise you, I expect my team. I expect everybody around me. And Tim Kennedy did this one time to me at the audit gym. The audit gym was a, that's where I work. Yeah. But the audit gym was a, um, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Onnit Gym was a, uh, it was a truly, uh, a, a place that really got me back on the right path. That was probably one of the biggest influences in who I am today as far as getting off of the other path it is the Onnit Gym. Why? You know, because, but I'll tell you why. Because the guys down there didn't give a shit what you've done. They gave a shit if you what you're doing now. Yep. Like, and it was back, it, it wasn't. Yeah, this it, was some years ago. Different crew, sure. Yeah, different crew, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, Juan, you know, that it's guy that. always shows up, right? Um, Eric, same way, always shows up, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, uh, Tim Kennedy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was down there working out with Tim Kennedy, Lance Armstrong, right? Like, you know, and all those guys. Yeah, everybody's still around too. They're I all mean, different places. Yeah, different places, there. but yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, so true. It, it's so true. They truly, I can speak to the mm -hmm. fact that I've trained with every one of these individuals that yeah. you're referring to. And it is entirely true. And that's how they feel about themselves too. They're not over there tooting their horns about no. what they've done in the past either. Nope. It's who are they today? Nope. And, and I'll, I'll tell you that those guys, th those, those four right there, like they, like the, 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 it's a level of accountability and expectation. Like, cause they, they were always going to show up for me mm -hmm. and it was disrespectful for me not to show up for them. They didn't care how much weight I lifted. They didn't care how I did it. They cared about effort. Yep. And, 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 you know, it was, it was a very, very, I hadn't had that since I'd gotten out. Yeah. And they like, when I moved to Austin, I started going down there and, and they really, you know, changed up the trajectory of who I am as a person. Yeah. I think that's so profound. You got yourself in a room full of people mm -hmm. who were behaving in a way that you knew that you needed to behave. Yes. And started just trying. Yeah. I will say it's quite, I think it's really cool because I've had the opportunity to train with each one of these individuals, yeah. right? And I can remember a specific recent reference or recent time training with Tim, going meeting up with him and then also with Lance. And mm -hmm. in both of these situations, I showed up and I, and, and to me, I'm still new here, right? Yeah. I'm new to Austin ish yeah. and I'm still getting, and in those situations, I showed up and was like, I don't, I don't care if it fits my training for the week. I don't care if it makes sense. Um, this is a moment for me to, work hard period yeah. and that's and like for some for how cool is it to be a person that makes someone else feel that way shared suffering like right? if we were to work out together right yeah. now even if it was like exactly what i did yesterday yeah. i'd be like all right well i guess then this is what we're doing because i want to be like i respect you yeah you know same th i mean same thing back right it's like it, it's like you know I, I respect the fact that like these guys are still getting after it yep right like yep. you know um, oh, so true. <laughs> it's like, you know, you take a guy that has been, you know, so good to me is Lance Armstrong. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love the guy to death. And, you know, to, to see how hard that guy works and how much he cares about people. I mean, he, you know, he, he's not. It's it just it's, it's like if that guy still gets after it, yeah. I, I still got to go. Right. Like being around people who who just believe in, in getting better every day, right? And, and, and you know, 
we all do it different ways, right? I get on a fire truck, you know, other people train, you know, they, they have their own training stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, all of us have our own different niches that we go on, yeah. uh, to be able to go and take that, that what we learn in those moments, that shared suffering between each other, because we're pushing each other to the next level, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what the workout, it, it really doesn't matter what the work is. It right. just, it's about the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. And then we turn around and we, we make sure we're good amongst each other. And then we go and try to flush that out and give it to as many people as we can, right? We try to disperse that yeah. in a way, right? And so like, that's the difference in, in our content and fitness influencers content, right? The difference is, is that, we are trying to disperse just getting better where you're at, mm -hmm. not a niche. It ain't a niche. It's just about getting up every day and getting it done. Mm -hmm. And like, it, cause it's a way of life. You know, mm -hmm. I believe in the gym, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I believe in the gym that like whatever you start. So this is the only rules to my gym is you got to leave better than you came. Mm -hmm. You have to finish the workout. And if somebody in the room doesn't finish the workout, the rest of the people in there have to disperse what they didn't do and they have to finish that workout mm. because that's the way it is in life mm -hmm. is when somebody else doesn't pull their weight and they don't finish it, somebody else has to do your work. Mm -hmm. If you can't finish this work that we set out to do, if it's on the board, we can only do more. But yeah, it's such a you know unique environment because I'll tell you this, with all those guys that we mentioned, mm -hmm. every time you work out with them and train with them, you get physically better, mm -hmm. you get mentally better mm -hmm. and you get emotionally better, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're working out and I, you know, you, you can argue this, but the way I work out every day is if there's not a point in the workout that I didn't think about quitting, I didn't emotionally grow. Yeah. So I didn't really get a workout in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And then I'm thinking about all of my sessions and I think it's just very natural. And I think it doesn't always have to be momentous, right? Like there can be many training sessions where it's yeah. just simply I could shave two reps. It's just simply, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be that. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, unless I you work out with Tim. The, the, Lance, yeah, the Lance thing was funny because it was very recent and, and it was so bad. What I showed up for. Well, I was told that I was showed up for. And then what we did, and this was someone else orchestrating the workout. Uh, Eric Hinman, he's phenomenal. Great dude. Anyway, when I showed up, I, there was a thing that we were going to do. And then he tells me, oh, we're doing this thing. And they are very different. Very Time domains are very different. The move, everything about this, I was like, oh, <laughs> you see, I didn't sign up for that. Um, but I'm here now and I, I'm going to do the thing, right? And it was, I remember having a conversation after with another friend and I was like, okay, so Lance is like really fit. Cause it was long, grueling, awful, terrible. Like I was having a miserable time. And mind you, it was just like, it doesn't matter. You will do the work. Yeah. I'm not going to let you know that I'm having a miserable time, but in here, yes, I would love to not be doing this. Uh, and I'm so grateful I did. And then <laughs> the person I was talking to afterwards was like, so you know, that's Lance, right? Like you're acting like you're surprised that the dude's super, yeah. it's Lance. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like he, um, yeah, but you know what? He was, he was suffering too. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, 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 you know, it's, that's where we're all messing up in the world is, is we're all trying to pretend like we're not suffering. Yeah. And we all are. Yeah. Like no matter what, like you're, you're going me Everybody listens to this podcast. Everybody's going through something. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know, the reality is, is that everybody's felt depression. Everybody's felt anxiety. Yeah. Everybody has some type of PTSD. Um, and that's okay. Right? Like, that's what makes us who we are. And that's what makes us unique. Mm -hmm. And that's what also gives us the value that we can give to others is to help others. And we only get that through our own suffering. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it, you know, Lance is, gosh, what a, I mean, Tim, you know, all of them, like what, what, what good, what good guys, you know? Yeah, totally. Yep. I just, uh, the, also the, the comfort, <laughs> crisis, whatever we want to call this thing. You know, it's like, uh, I, I heard something recently that I love that was just aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort Yeah, because we look at people that are in their 60s, 70s, et cetera, that are, that are aged, like aged. And mm -hmm. then you look at people in those age demographics that are doing pff, legless rope climbs, yeah. you know, yeah. crazy things. And crazy. it's like, then the, so that's exciting to me. And like you talked about before we started recording that you're excited about our generation yeah. because we're going, 
I don't agree. I have sufficient information to to showcase that that is untrue. Mm-hmm. So I'm not playing your game anymore. The only people who are saying that the next generation of the United States of America is bad is, is the one that's on is, their way out. Is the one that's on their way out, right? And it's it's the one that's the most unhealthy. Mm-hmm. It's the one that's doing the least. It's the one that that honestly messed our country up that we're the ones having to fix it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. it's 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 that, right? And huh? it's also the people that raised us. <laughs> so it, it's it's one of those deals that that it's okay, but but what I'll tell you is is I believe in the next generation of the United States of America. I believe that the United States of America is the greatest country on the face of the planet. I believe that majority of people in the world are still good. Mm-hmm. And if you don't believe that, it's because you're listening to what I call extinctionist. Mm-hmm. And there are these people out there who are extinctionist. Mm-hmm. You know, the only way the world gets better or that people get better is if there's hope that they can get better and that there's the possibility of being better. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we've got to put hope out there. Yeah. We've got to, like, your story is important because... If there's not hope that people can quit alcohol, yep. then why would they ever try to quit? Sure. And the problem right now is, is that we've got to podcast like this. We've got to keep echoing. More content's got to get out there. We don't have a, 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 a problem with so many bad people out there. We have a problem that so many good people aren't telling their story out there right now. That's the issue. Yeah. And it's going to be okay, right? People are worried right now. It's an election year. Yeah. People are concerned, right? Turn your TV off. Turn your social media off. Like, I, I do this. I do this once a week. I go through my Instagram, and if I'm scrolling and I see a post that makes me feel a way that I don't want to feel or it pisses me off or fires me up, I get rid of them. Yep. Like, look, the world is good. It's what you make of it. Mm-hmm. You have the power to make the, your life whatever you want to. Yeah. There are no circumstances that you can't make your situation better, but it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. You can't just do it in one area and not all of them. Like you have to do that. Right. And I think so many people are, um, so many people hold themselves while you got people on one side that they try to live too long off of whatever successes they had. Right. I call them the uncle Rico's. Sure. (laughs) I also find people on the other side that hold themselves in this, I call it their personal prison because of the mistakes they've made. Mm. All of them are just moments in time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I always ask, like, it's, it's, it, I would love for you to fire back at this one, but, like, if if your life, you know, let's say your adult life is 8, 70, 80 years, right? Probably you would be 200, but... Um, <laughs> let's hope, uh, right? Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, right. But, like... If, if it, let's say it's 80 years, if only 10 years of it was consumed by alcoholism, were you really an alcoholic? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, because guess what? Like, our life is defined by, like, what is the majority of yeah. it? I love that. What I will say to the alcoholic bit, because that's my... That's your deal. That's yeah. my thing. Um, is that alcoholism, to my understanding, is a disease. Mm-hmm. And it is, uh, for some reason, I have an allergy to this substance. I don't engage with it normally, right? So I don't want to lose that. Yeah, no, listen. Right, right. And it's a toxin. I just don't want it, right? But uh, so, however, you're right. There was 15 years of my life where that substance run, ran amok, right? Yeah, ran amok. But in the grand scheme, that is a blip. Mm-hmm. I choose to cling to some degree to that one because I, I want to remember what I'm capable of in that 100%. situation so that I don't return there. And then additionally, uh, there are far too many people suffering in a very similar, if not exact same manner. And, and so them. that's why I'm not letting up on that because yep. uh, there are way too many people that are suffocating under 100%. addiction. And there's, so, but there's so many people, but, but that are wonderful, so, brilliant, but there's that. so many other dimensions of you. Yeah. Yeah. Than just that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. We have unlocked, like I said, whole different version. Okay. So we're going to have to land a plane, which is kind of annoying because I have more stuff, but it just is what it is. You're an interesting human. Uh, this could go on forever. Oh so I don't know about forever for a while. So you named your podcast, your human. And I just want to know why you named it that. Um, you know, I just think that sometimes like people just, they, they kind of forget that we're all just humans. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we look at cops, we look at all these people that mess up and not just cops, but I like to say that one because that one's like always out there, right? Yeah, um, these days. People are just humans mm -hmm. and people make mistakes mm -hmm. and people don't always get it right. None of us do. And I just, I go back to the conditional, being unconditionally good in a, in a conditional world, right? Like, let, let me go ahead and help you with a lot of stress. Quit trying to figure out what people deserve. And, and be who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, I just, I think that like when I can, sim I'm a Marine, so I have to keep things simple. So like, I just think that, cause I did this for a long time and I treated people the way I thought they deserved to be treated. You know, well, I deserve this and you deserve this, right? Like what a piece of shit game. Like mm -hmm. when I hear people say, oh, I deserve this. I'm like, in what world, right? And and here's what I'll tell you is, is if we all sit down and we all get close to that truth, there is no such thing as your truth, my truth. There is just the truth. Mm -hmm. um, if we all always got what we deserved, none of us would have shit, <laughs> right? Yeah. If every time you text while you were driving, you had a wreck or you hurt somebody, if every time you sped, you got a ticket, if every time you, you know, you did something stupid, you mm -hmm. got the consequence that should come with that. Totally. It would all of us, all of us have had people and we get the majority of us get better than we deserve every single day. Yeah. And so be grateful. So be grateful and also be a person who gives other people more than they deserve yeah. every time you can. I, I, I truly live by this one simple way, and I, I believe it's, it's that way for all of us, is if you can, when it comes to helping people, if you can, you must, because not everybody can. Yeah. And that's, that's the reality. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm running, I stop. I stop by every homeless person to make sure that they're still alive. I stop and I look at them and I stop and I ask them how they're doing. If I, if I need to wake them up, if I can't tell that, like I, I, I just, I, I just do it because it's the right thing to do. Do I need to do it? Mm -hmm. do, how many other people pass them and don't care? Yeah. Right. But, but we're all just human and we're all just people who are here for a limited time. We get one life and at the minimum that we can do is, is be kind to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I strongly agree. And I think that what you mentioned earlier about your scroll and unfollow thing makes me think of the fact that as much as it is important what we consume, you know, from a dietary standpoint of like what we put in our bodies, also that one as well, that diet of what we, you know, if you, if you ingest kindness, you're more likely to give out kindness. It's, it's kind of like someone this morning at the gym just walked by and said, you're always so smiling in the morning. Why are you always? So smiling? I'm like, well, I start my day writing down five gratitudes and I pray every morning. Yeah. And that's something that I was taught to do. And as a result, I get to walk in here and smile. Absolutely. How and simple it, is that? <laughs> and, and, and it works. And like, and then you're kind. And then you be, you like, it just it has this ripple. Yep. Because you do have ripples. And Everything you're doing has a ripple. It, it, it does, right? And you're going to be an example to the world no matter what. Yep. It's either going to be what to be or what not to be. Yep. And and I, I think we need we need conversation changers, right? And so what I what I say when I say that it's it's when conversations start going down a negative road, mm -hmm. we need people to t change it back to positive. Mm -hmm. We need there's there is good and all bad. There is good and all bad. This is so funny. I have heard you in conversation recorded, uh, where you've done that on repeat. I've heard you yeah. real time stop something spiraling a certain direction and pivot it 
over and oh this is so funny because i can yeah. think of what, how cool is it that's proof that you're practicing something you said, which on the content game is an altogether different thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I love that. Okay. Let's, let's, what else? Yeah. Let's round this one. thing out. I know. We, we, I don't know what I got anywhere else to be. You know, you're good. Well, so, I mean, I could take a little bit longer if you're okay. Mm -hmm. um, but so then if that's the case, I do want to ask you because you're also passionate, passionate about um, parenting. Yeah. And like hands on real parenting yeah and i think that we can look to our generation as one that maybe got a lot less hands-on parenting yeah so you know this is another very very unpopular opinion um so i believe that every problem in the world that you with people right now you can stem back to weak men um, and I'll tell you why. And this is why, like, I am, I refuse to go down that path because I've got daughters. Um, women are, and you can get into this whole socialism thing, all, all this, this, this social, these, these views and stuff, and I don't even get into it, but, um, women are the most valued creature that, that we were ever given. Um, and, and, and it's not, it's not, it's not because, oh, they're weak or all these things like that. That's complete bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Like this perception that was ever given to a woman that they're weak is, is just, it's, it's, it's mind blowing to me because women are the strongest, most resilient creatures on the face of the planet. And men are, men were only put on earth to protect them, not because they're weak and they can't protect themselves, but because they are that important. Mm -hmm. And, and so when it comes to parenting, you know, for my daughters, first off, I'm the longest man they'll ever date. Mm -hmm. Second off, how they see me, if my daughters grow up one day and they start dating shitty man, men, it's because I was a shitty man. I am going to set the standard, the bar for who they are with. Who they marry will will 100%, I'll set the bar for the type of man that they marry. And if I don't set that bar high, they're going to be with weak, shitty men. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's cool. I, I agree women are incredibly strong. And I just think that obviously given the status of the fact that, every, you know, that they're so independent today and so on, they, I'm one of them. Anyway, like that's proof that they're pretty powerful creatures. That being said, I also do believe that because of a male's role in a woman's life, she also then has access to this other layer of self as a direct result. You know what I mean? So it's it's a it's a two way street. I think men have a tremendous amount of value. Like you, yeah, you but know. every woman right now, like when when men blame, well, you know, my, when when you look at a woman's problem, every woman that like that is weak, somewhere in the line, she had a weak man somewhere yeah. a man fucked her over somewhere yeah. right whether it was her dad who wasn't there or whether it was her husband like somewhere down the line yeah he she sit there and she watched her dad not be there for her mom somewhere down the line and i don't care i, I go back to unconditional con, in a conditional world when i hear men say oh well you know I just want to be appreciated. You weren't put on earth to be appreciated. How about do something and be something that's worth appreciating before you start going out and demanding other people appreciate you, right? It is, it's bullshit. And right, are you only going to be a good man or a good husband or a good father only when you're appreciated? I think that goes for both sexes. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. But what I'll go back and tell you is, is that when you look at, you, cause you started this with children and the only reason I'm putting it like this right now with children, who's raising our generation? The women. Do you want the honest answer? The women. The women are. And the school systems, daycares. Well, we, that's a whole other ballgame. Yeah. But, 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 but let me tell you why, but hold on. But let me tell you why that is too. Because look, you go back to Viking times, you go back to, um, World War II. I mean, look at where Rosie Riveter came from. Our men went off to war and women, guess what they did? Everything that a man did while it's here. Yeah, they figured it out. They, they always do. Mm -hmm. They always do, right? 
And so what I'll say is, is that these kids are having to get raised by school systems now because men weren't there to help and women had to raise the kids and the, and the household. Mm -hmm. And, and it wasn't a partnership. I mean, literally think about this, the standard right now in society for you to be considered a dad yeah. is every other weekend mm -hmm. and pay child support. Add that up. Right. And I hear men out there who say all the time, oh, you know, that I, I couldn't fight the court system. If you didn't go broke fighting the court system, like if you're not homeless fighting the court system for your children, then you won't fucking fight for anything. If your children weren't worth fighting for to do your part. And the only reason that standard is that way is because that's what society expects of men. Mm -hmm. And so many men out there and I look, I, I'm not calling women out because I, you can't call another population out until you fix your own until you like we've got to start policing our own and women can start policing their own right yeah. like that's yeah. how it's got to work yeah and we have got to get back to um strong men it just comes back to whether it's men parenting anything to me what it comes back to is this concept that i feel that you will say yes to, I think, is just that, you know, no one's coming to save you concept, you know, of like, not only like, no one's going to come fix your life for you. Nope. Nobody. And, and so the same with the with your children, you know, like, I love the Jordan Peterson concept concept and his 12 rules. I want to say it's number five. And I don't have children. So maybe I shouldn't speak too much to this, although that is a goal of mine. Yeah. Um, but it is something to the effect of, you know, do not let your children do anything that would make you dislike them. Yeah. And, and the concept behind that is, is because if you let your children do things that make you dislike them, you love them and the world will treat them far worse than you ever would. And so it's a powerful thing of, yeah. you know, I just, I don't know yet again, I don't want to over speak to it because it's not something I have yet embarked on, but I absolutely am doing my homework. Cause when yeah. I do go down that road, I would like to show up well there. Well, you know, most, a lot of people. Um, so first off, you know, broken people hurt, broken people or break people, right. Or, or hurt people, yeah. hurt people. Yeah. So the problem that we have right now is, is that we've got people who never fix themselves. And it's contagious. So so this is a theme that's kind of sprinkled throughout this episode then. So then with fixing self, with starting to prioritize self, with paying attention to who you're around, like, are there specific practices that are in place for you today? Physical activity yeah. is clearly a standout. And who you surround yourself with is also another standout. Are there other actions that you're taking? Because I think one of the things is like, I cannot know what's happening in here in my brain yeah. unless I intentionally carve out time to spend time in there. And it doesn't even take me that long. But if I will not hang out there, I will not know what's going on there either. Yeah. So for, for me, like, I wake up every day and the first thing I do is, is something for myself. So I go work out. Like I, I do something to make myself better. And you would consider workout often meditative in some fashion? Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a hundred percent meditation, right? Yeah. Like to, for me, like look, go, go get in a pool where nobody's talking to you and you're looking at a black line and tell me you're not meditating. Yeah. You're going to have some conversations with yourself. A hundred percent. Right. And so running, go out there and run your, your you know what I mean? Like, um, and so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I live by, I live by this rule, right? Like, first off, I've got to set the standard for who my daughter's going to date, mm -hmm. who they're going to marry. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's number one. I've got to be an example to them. Yeah. What a beautiful motivator. I mean, if that doesn't motivate you, what, what's going to, right? Um, the second piece is, is I don't have anybody in my life or around me that if I died today, that I wouldn't want my kids to know or to be around them. If I couldn't, if I would not want my kids to be around them, then they're not in my life because that's not good. I don't want my kids to ever get a, 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 in, you know, a, a false piece of like, well, that, that person's a good person. So people that I would not want my kids to be around whenever I die, I don't spend time with. 
I want to ask a question with that that might be yeah. uh, family. Yeah. What about it? That's a tough one for yeah, some. Same thing. I don't care. Navigate. Don't care. Okay. I don't talk to my mom. I don't, I, look, I've got. I, I, the only person I the only person I speak to is my dad. Mm. That's the only person in my life other than my my nucleus family here mm-hmm. that I speak to. Mm-hmm. And I won't compromise on it. Because you know, people be like, Oh, you're me, you're this, you're that. No, no. I've gotta get it right with my kids. Mm-hmm. I've got 18 years to train them for what nastiness the world is going to throw at them, right? I keep them in public schools. You want to know why? Because guess what's going to happen the day that they get out of school? They're going to go be in the public. So I would rather them come home to me and and let's navigate these things together. And, and you know, but, but also my kids, I don't just tell them what's wrong and what's right. I empower them to, to be free thinkers. Mm Mm-hmm. So my daughters, I, I have this method, and it's going to come out. It's in my book. It's a, the box method, right? Uh-huh. And so the box method is, is, is all of us need to do this, is, is I give my kids what they're trying to hit. Most of us are saying things, doing things, trying to make decisions, taking actions that we don't even know what we're even trying to hit. We just know misses. And so my daughters, I tell them every morning, you know, you have to be strong. I expect you to be strong. I expect you to be kind. I expect you to be a, a leader. And I expect you to be, um, what's, that, what's the fourth one? They would be able to speak it to me. Strong, <laughs> kind, a leader, and um, there's one other one. But Loving, anyways. Supportive, I don't know. No, it's, it's be an example. Be an exa- yeah, be an example. So being a leader, be an example. But it's like be, be strong, be kind, be a leader, be an example. And so... What I tell them is, is every decision they come home, they're like, oh, you know, so-and-so said this to me. And I'm like, well, how did you handle it? You can filter it through that. And they're like, well, you know, I just, I told them that they were dumb. And I'm like, okay, well, does that fit in your box? Does, is that kind? Is that being a leader? Is that being an example? Is that being strong? I go, nothing about that fits in your box. So how could we have handled this? Better. To where it fixed in your box. Well, maybe I could have just asked them to, to not be like that to me. And, and if they were like that to me, I could say, okay, well, it's okay. Well, let me know. I'd, I'll play with you. when it, that, You know what I mean? Like I, they can navigate that and yeah. they can get it back on target to what they're trying to hit with their decisions and their actions. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that we all need that, you know, and, and with my kids, like I, I love them and, but I'm not their friend. I'm not my kid's friend. I think that alone is a powerful statement. I'm their father. Right. And they never have to worry. They never have to be scared. But they are going to struggle. And I let them struggle. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to watch them struggle because I want to, I want to fix everything for them. But they're going to be strong and they're going to be good and they're going to do good. And, and I I am, I'm their father. I'm not their friend. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I think that's, important it matters Mm -hmm. it matters tremendously like that's your like your mission on this earth you've had many and you'll have more you're not done you know in fact you're probably really only just getting started (laughs) i hope not but uh that's a big one thank you yeah i just want you to speak to that because i think that you know i i yet again i think this is probably just me doing research because at some point being a father is 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 a a big part of my life Mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a title that i hold very sacred Mm mm-hmm you know, they didn't choose me. I chose them. Yeah. Well, and thank you from, from, and I will, yeah, from a girl that, you know, yeah. has a dad. And by the way, I have a great relationship with him. And it's, awesome. it's, it's definitely been, you know, one of the, one of the coolest things that, that I, I always, I can think of all the years whenever I still lived in the same state, it's a bit more challenging now, but of all of the times whenever something would happen in my life and I would be able to at least return back to this person who just cared deeply. Yeah. Like, if nothing else, they just care. And that, like what that will do for a soul to know that there's some other soul on this planet that just cares. Yeah. So I have tremendous gratitude for that. Yeah. You know? And you talk about, like, women going out. You know, you talk about going out and being independent and stuff. You know, it's, it's awesome. And, and, like, I want my daughters to always know that I'm capable 
Like they have to have the confidence that I'm capable to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to be in it. You, you need that for yourself. Like you need that for yourself to be okay, to know that like you have the capacity to help them. Yeah. It would probably feel pretty bad to you if you felt like if your daughters came to you for help, you couldn't. Yeah. So, and that can look a lot of different ways. Like there are seasons of life. And I do think that, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, nobody's perfect, right? You're human. Yeah. But what a thing to strive for. Yeah. We should all strive for that. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see here. Oh, I am going to ask real quick. Cause now I, I genuinely, after hearing whatever we got here, your diet and training right now. Yeah. What's that like? You have to eat a lot of food right now. Yeah. I mean, like I, like I'm looking right here and I, I'm at 2,975 calories I've burned today already. <laughs> just did activity. Yeah. That's not even just like your resting yeah. burn. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I'm training for an Ironman right now. Um, there is another thing that like I'm working on. Uh, it's in the works. I can't get into it. Okay. Um, serving, right? Um, so, you know, I'm doing this Ironman, getting my swimming down. I, I hate swimming. I, I don't like biking. Running is okay, but, like, running these distances is not my favorite. Yeah. Um, but I've like, I've got to do hard shit, right? The only way you get better is by doing stuff you don't like, stuff you're uncomfortable with. You know, resiliency is nothing more than how long can you suffer, mm -hmm. right? Because in suffering is where growth and learning is. So the more resilient you are, the more you grow because the longer you can stay in those hard moments. And so, yeah, right now I'm, I'm training – I don't know, Dre could tell you, but probably, um, probably three, two and a half, three hours a day average. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, really trying to eat as healthy as I can, but like mm -hmm. when you're as hungry as I am, like it, it's, it's a struggle, right? It's, yeah. And with that style of training, that's probably interesting. You probably have to deal with goose and things yeah. like that. And those can be tough on the gut. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that's, that's it, right? Like really right now we're just, we're trying to figure out fuel. Yep. There's just, there's a lot of complications to it. Right. And so that's honestly another piece why I came out with my dash hydrate. You know, I, I, I developed this hydration formula, uh, for people who aren't like, I call it the unconventional athlete. And so it's, it's, it's the moms who are moms all day long and then they have to go out and they want to get a run in, right? Or they, they just don't put their hydration first and, and they're out there busting their ass every day. And we all know how important that, that I mean, look, the foundation of every piece of nutrition or everything you do mm -hmm. comes down to hydration. Mm -hmm. I don't care. You could get everything else right if you're not hydrated. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. Yeah. And that has to do with minerals, not yeah. just liquid ounces. They have to coexist. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, it's not just about drinking water. Right. Yeah. I see all these people walking around with these, you know, huge water jugs. And it's like, yeah, well, that's that's awesome. You're peeing it all out. Right. But you yeah. should also be taking in electrolytes with it. And so right. we built an electrolyte formula that is by far the most comprehensive hydration formula on the market. And I'm going to prove that um, most people. A lot of people in the industry came out to me, friends, uh -huh. and they were like, well, do you want to make your product comprehensive or marketable? And I said, I don't, I don't know what that means, right? And so when I went and looked at all these other hydration formulas, they uh -huh. throw shit products in it. Sure. And people don't even know this. Yeah. You know, so we went, and look, we, we I, I didn't cut any, I wanted it to work because the people that I'm selling to, yeah. uh, they don't have an option to perform. Uh, people are relying on them and, and they, they're going to perform, right? Whether it's firefighters, first responders, whether it's, it's, it's people like you, whether it's, it's the moms out there, the dads, whether it's, you know, whatever role they're playing, the teachers, yeah. you know, I call them the essential, the, 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 the country coined that phrase during a terrible time, right? Yeah. But it's, this is the, the hydration product that's electrolyte product that's for the, um, for the essential workers. Yeah. I like it. Well, and it falls back under your, you said, is it marketable or, um, you know, optimal, Co comprehensive, comprehensive, comprehensive. Yeah. there we go. Yeah. And that falls back under your trust liked. Yeah. You, you fell back on your trust thing again of, no, I'd rather go that route as opposed to the liked marketable, whatever. Always. Uh, so, so diet and training, there's definitely try to eat well, but you got to eat a lot of, I can just only imagine. And then you're training a pretty, pretty high volume at yeah, it's this a high, time. It's, it's a high volume, you know, yeah. and trying to do that with travel and work, you know, I mean, you've got to be very, very, um, you know, I couldn't do it without, without Dre and Keegan. I mean, yep. you know, without my team who just are, are on it, right? Like I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. But it's awesome. Yeah. I learned so much. My daughters are getting to see it. You know, I'm running the half marathon, the 3M half marathon this, 
Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to, you know, I'm just going out there trying to get, I want to get a faster time than I've ever gotten. Um, so we'll see. I love it. I love it. I want to get a faster time than I've ever gotten. You know, that's just a, the, the talk about discipline, consistency, resiliency, all of those things. Then the, the note is it's, it's an everyday earn. It's a, it's a, you didn't get it once and you got to keep it. If I don't pick up my tools today, I'm not, I'm not at where'd the belt go. You were either every day you're either getting better or getting worse. Yeah. Yeah. You're never just, it's so true. But then it's exciting. If you can come to like, okay, that's the deal. So that's the deal. I'm either getting better or I'm getting worse. Now I choose. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, like, I think to me that that simplifies things. I'm a very process oriented individual at this point. So it's very easy to go. All right. You got a choice. Well, simple doesn't mean I either. certainly don't want to get worse. Usually when things get complicated, it's yeah. because people are trying to justify something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the smirk. The smirk. Yes. Yes. And it really, because all concepts that seem to play out quite well are really, there's not a whole lot to it. Usually when things are trying, usually when things get complicated, yeah. um, it's because somebody is trying to sell you something or they're trying to get you to to think a different way or avoid the simplicity. So true. So true. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are three things that you are grateful for today? You know, I, I, I'm grateful for, um, my family, right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm grateful for my health, um, where I'm at. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm grateful for, um, you know, I, I, it's kind of crazy. I'm just, I'm grateful that I get another day to do this. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I think that like I see so many people just waiting to die and it's like, like I get to do this. Like I get to wake up and I'm going to hopefully I get a, another day tomorrow. Right. Like how cool would that be? And just every day, just I'm, I'm surrounded by incredible human beings. I'm I'm you know, it's it's just it's it's all good. So like, you know, I would say, you know, family, um, you know, my health, uh, where I'm at and then, you know, um for sure, my friends and, and the life that I get to live. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. My gratitudes I always give mine as well. My gratitudes are going to be one. I started with a new client today and I'm like in, because I've got the online and the in real life. Anyway, uh, the in real life. And this is one where we've got like a big weight loss goal. Oh, I love it. And I'm so freaking pumped to accompany this person on that journey. So that's, awesome. that's one. Uh, another one is I'm actually just, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for, so this is my third podcast to record this week, which this is no, nothing uncommon to you because you literally have your own and have done a yeah. lot, you've done like seven this week yeah. or something yeah, I've been all crazy. Over. Yeah. Uh, so I'm grateful for this. Like this gives me an excuse to get to have the opportunity to meet with you. And by the way, we should train together. Hang like, we'll, we'll figure Let's out something. Yeah. 100% yeah. 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 Uh, so want to do that, but, but it's an opportunity to have meaningful interactions and the idea that I can also just press record and then I get access to them later. Like you never know when I'll choose to return to this episode because they, I'm going to get something out of it, much less other individuals. Yeah. So like you said, sharing that message is cool. So I'm grateful for this platform and the ability to do this at all. And then uh, I'm grateful for, insatiable curiosity. I think I have an, I have an uncle that is very successful and I look to them for perspective and advice on certain things. And, and it's, it's just cool. Uh, one of the things that he told me, let's see, last summer I was going through some tough stuff and was feeling pretty confused reestablishing myself in a new career, having outlandish expectations that were not aligning with the reality, you name it. And um, yeah, I have that tendency. And so then he told me, you know, when I was at a moment where I was like, I really don't know what, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I was feeling very scared. And just, he was like, we're operating from fear. That's not normal for you. That's interesting. And then he said, whatever you're going to do, I actually do believe in it because you have a trait of success and that is curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, that's awesome. That meant a lot to me from someone like that to say something like that, you know, those things, they, they, they matter. So anyway, okay. So where can they find you support? You're writing a book, you have your, like you got a lot going on. Yeah. I got another book coming out be this fall. Um, it's called, um, why to what? And so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, and then I've got Dakota Meyer 0317 on Instagram, Yep. your human podcast. And then yeah, dash hydrate. 
Yep. That's it. Yep. All of that will be in the description. So if you guys want to go follow along with his journey and I just, I enjoy consuming your content because like I said, I mean, I pulled quotes left and right. I bet at some point you were like, can you stop quoting me so I can actually say what I think? No, I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you like, um, usually like I got out of the podcast game for a while because they all just asked me the same dumb questions uh, Yeah, and they're lazy. Right. And it's like, well, why am I going to waste my time on you? Um, you're awesome. Like mm -hmm. you, you did an awesome job. Thank you. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. It definitely is still in its early stages and we're figuring it out, but it's, uh, it's a cool thing. I am fascinated by humans. Yeah. So this is a very easy thing to me to yep. do, which I've or it just, it, it flows very naturally. I feel so thank you. That was awesome. Um, and so that will be all of your stuff will be in the description. And then yet again, like I said, at the very beginning, I mean it to be true. I, I am honored to get to sit down and have a conversation with you. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And then to the consumer, if you're still here, then I want you to know that we really appreciate your time because just as Dakota's time is incredibly valuable and just as my time is valuable, your time is also valuable. 100%. And so the fact that you've chosen to come spend it here with us in this way does mean a lot. Yeah. And so uh, I do also, I've got to start, I've, I'm doing a better job at doing my actual job, which is telling people at the end of an episode, I do coaching. And I do online coaching. So there are multiple tiers. You can check it out at clairebasecoach.com. That will be in the description. But if you want me to coach you on your fitness, your nutrition, your mindset, whatever, if you want to get better and you want to collaborate with me on that endeavor, we have options and I would love to do that. So um, that's a wrap. We hope that you guys choose to have a beautiful day. Perfect. <laughs> that's it. We did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>